Hello everyone and welcome to this week's InDesign scripting quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can do things like underlines and apply it to your text inside of Illustrator. With this basic script, we're going to be able to apply a hyperlink to our text and it's going to apply a random swatch or random color every time. And we're also going to be going over all the different underline properties you can have access to like the color, the tint, the weight and how you can do things like set the styles of the actual text itself and how to set the link. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description. You can follow us on GitHub for coding updates and also check out this code, try it out for yourself, follow us there for future coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Where in there you can also find links for AE scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange for other cool stuff I make. Alright, so we're going to just start going over this code and first how we can access text and then deal with the kind of hyperlink uh, type stuff. So first I have it set up where we get our active document and all of our layers. In this case, we're just going to assume we have a single layer with a text frame, which we just have this text that says hyperlink me. So no hyperlinks already set up, but if you do already have hyperlinks set up, you can get them all uh, with doc.hyperlink text sources. So just get a document object. And if there are existing hyperlinks, you can get them here. So for example, if I was to run this, recomment it, I will have some OG sources as I've written here you can say OG sources, original sources. When I run it, we're going to get a, a valid variable. We can check the length of it. You can see we have one existing hyperlink and that's because we've applied it right here. So do note if you have an existing hyperlink and you try to create a new one over it, it actually will cause you an error. So it is important to check if something already has a hyperlink or not, um, which we will do as we go into our text itself. Uh, but before we actually grab our text object, which is fairly easy, we're going to set up our new underline. Um, so if we want to check out all of the properties we have access to, we can check out the character style object. So if I go into Adobe InDesign here inside of uh, extend scripts, object model viewer, and if we go down to the C's and find character style, inside of here, we're actually going to see a ton of properties we have access to. These are all of the possible styles you have access to in InDesign in this case. Um, and if we scroll down all the way to the U's, you can see we have a whole bunch of underlying properties. And these are what we're basically going to be taking a look at. In order to add a new style or to just kind of create one from scratch that we can later apply to something, we'll create a new variable called underline style. And to actually kind of initialize that, we need to refer to our doc character styles and we're going to add a new character style. This character style can then be applied to other various texts or other objects um, and reused as much as you need. To start, we're going to set the underline dot underline property of our style to true um, because as you can see the first property here underline if true underlines the text um, and that's what we want to do at the basic level so in order to now preview this we need to grab our text layer now there's kind of a strange hierarchy sometimes with InDesign and Illustrator text and we need to get used to that you could have text within other objects, within layers, within layers. So you need to know how deep within your layer it is. And in this case, that's why we have a simple um, setup. We have our first layer, correct? We have layer one here. We have a text frame. We just have one in our whole layer. So we know it's the first text frame. But we can't just apply it to the text frame. There's a sub object called texts. And this is basically all the different texts that are contained within your individual text frame. In order to apply the underlying style, we need to actually grab that text object. So we know there's one piece of text in here. We're going to grab text zero of our first text frame in our first layer. Now this might seem convoluted, but now that we've created an underlying style, we have the variable. Um, nothing's really been added to the 
the document itself for us to use. So we're going to create a variable called hyperlink source and set this equal to our doc.hyperlink text sources, which we used back here to get our OG sources. And we're going to add a new one, which uses our text. This simply refers to the source of the hyperlink itself. What is the hyperlink going to? Is this a text layer? Then with our hyperlink source variable, we're going to set the applied character style. Remember, we created a character style to our defined underline style. Now, what this should do if we run it, we need to actually remove the previous hyperlink. You can see that adds a nice black hyperlink. To test that it is a hyperlink, um, all we need to do is double click on it and you can see we have remove hyperlink or manage hyperlink. So we do have a hyperlink, but it has no actual link attached to it. So in order to adjust the link of our hyperlink, now that it's applied to our text layer, we're going to say hyperlink destination. And this is just going to be equal to our doc.hyperlink URL destinations. And we're gonna add whatever we want. In this case, a link to my AE scripts page. This means that not only do we have sort of a document global hyperlink text sources list, all the sources of our hyperlinks, we also have all of our destinations as well. And in order to apply our destination, we're going to say docs.hyperlinks, all the hyperlinks in our doc. We're going to add our hyperlink source and our hyperlink destination. This is the final linkage, which says, take this hyperlink source, which we have set up already right here, and link it to actually match up with this hyperlink destination. And now when run, you can see we have our hyperlink as before. And when we double click on it, you can see in manage hyperlink, we now have a link appropriate to what we set it as. Now, obviously there's a few more settings here that we now need to go over. We've set the underline to true, but we have more control over how our underline looks. What we can do is uh, if we want to set a random color, a really cool thing we can do is just go to doc swatches and grab any item. Any item will grab a random swatch. So uh, when I apply this, it will basically have a random color each time. We can also set the gap color. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you can. You can also use a random swatch or a predefined swatch you've created. You can set the underline offset. You can set the underline tint. You can set the underline type as well as how thick you want your underline weight to be. So now when we run it, you can see we have a thick randomized color hyperlink below our uh, our text, which is also linking to the appropriate place we defined it. And you know, you can go back in and make adjustments to the styling of it as much as you need and continue to randomize it and adjust your underlines and hyperlinks. Although this tutorial was mostly about hyperlinks and underlines, I'm gonna call it hyperlinks because it's kind of implied if it's underlined. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub where you can also check out this code for yourself. Follow us there for future coding updates and on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Or you can also check out links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange for some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.